I always thought 30 would be my thriving era. Yet all the birthday treats, my free birthday Starbucks, cute thrift store finds, and flowers from a friend, were not easing the pain of saying goodbye to my 20s. Maybe it's because there are things I haven't accomplished that I thought I would by this point. Maybe it's because the person who brought me into this world is not here to help me begin this next chapter. Maybe it's vanity. The aging I see around my eyes when I smile, or my new silver friend. I call her Norma because I'm trying to normalize getting grays. Or maybe it's the fear of all the unknowns this next decade holds. I'm honestly not sure what had me so down, but in the course of filming these ordinary moments at the start of my 30th year, the beauty of the everyday began to shift my mindset. Spring is the perfect reminder that every passing year brings wisdom and renewal. We learn to be like the wildflowers, who do not labor or spin or worry about what comes next. So that's what we'll be doing together in this vlog, telling the story of aging from a different point of view. Because in the words of Laura Ingalls Wilder, there is no reason why we should not be merry as we grow older. You do not have to be good Even the best of us have been misunderstood So get up on your feet Good morning. It is actually pretty late in the morning. I had a really late start to my day because I have the day off and I just struggled to get out of bed, which is a shame because I do like to make the most of a day off by getting up earlier, but I am taking the position that just because my day did not start out productive doesn't mean I can't turn it into a productive day. So if you're in a similar boat right now, maybe your day up till now has been pretty unproductive Maybe it's been a lot of watching other people be productive on YouTube. Let this be your sign that at any point in time, you can change the day around for the better. So it's currently 1130. I'm still finishing my coffee. We brought in a little bit of the sunshine with the mug because right now outside it is a dreary, rainy spring day. And I just finished my Bible reading. And now what I want to do is work a little bit on my April printables and get those finished. And then since it's a rainy day, I do have a soup that I want to put into the crock pot for our dinner. And then I'm hoping to get some reading in to catch up on some of my journaling and maybe learn something new. So with that, I am going to transition to my couch, get a little bit more comfy. I can hear Jeannie over there snoring already. So let's head over there and finish up my printable stickers. With my work done, I decided to take a break and sit by the window with a cup of tea and admire the beauty of the rain. I always keep a few books on hand by my window seat. This collection of poetry is a new favorite, 
and one I actually received for my birthday. It's called Wildflower Pages by Brittany Lister, and each of her poems is a short and sweet reminder of God's presence and perfect timing in our lives. One of the things I've been reflecting on the most is how grateful I am that I started documenting my life in my 20s. It is such a blessing to have multiple journals that chronicle this decade of my life. Your 20s are such a pivotal time of life, and for me, I can really see how those years shaped who I am today. Those years are when I met God, they're when I met my husband, they're the time when I first experienced deep grief, but they're also the time when I have so many beautiful moments and experiences to look back on, some that I will remember for the rest of my life. And I'm so glad that I have taken the time to document them and to make them abide and last forever. Documenting my life is a pursuit I intend to take with me into my 30s. Sometimes when I look at the blank pages of my journal, I wonder what will these pages hold? What will the next 10 years of my life look like? And what will be the memories I want to capture? And even though it feels like time is always moving faster and life is just getting busier, I know that I will make the time to put something on the page. That's one of the reasons I've started doing monthly journaling. I may not always have the time to create an entry for every day like I did in some of the years throughout my 20s. But I do think I can always make time for one page a month. And as I get older, the more I realize the things I want to look back on are not just the big events and milestones of life, but all of those little joys. It's the small pleasures of life, like a free latte, or going thrifting, spending time with a friend at a cafe, or seeing the crocuses bloom in my front yard, or my husband planning a party for me, and being surrounded by the people I love. These are the things that I want to look back on. If the idea of monthly journaling excites you, then I want to invite you to join me and actually join an entire group of people who are committed to documenting our lives one month at a time. We call it the Monthly Journaling Club, and we get together on the first Thursday of every month to have a live journaling hangout where we work on our month in review pages for the previous month and look forward to all that comes next. It is completely free to join and you can do so over on my Patreon or if you're interested in supporting my channel and getting access to the monthly sticker collections that many of us like to use in our review pages, you can access those as well as much more bonus content by joining one of the paid tiers on Patreon. So it is raining again outside, which means it is the perfect weather to sit at my desk and spend some time creating. The older I get, the more firmly I believe that there is no age limit to pursuing your passions and dreams and to trying something new and being creative. It's kind of ironic that with age comes wisdom. And yet at the same time, it feels like with age, there also comes a 
lack of interest in taking risks in pursuing things that you might fail at or might not be good at. We only want to pursue things that we know are going to have a high reward or that we're definitely going to be able to do well. And somewhere along the way, we lose the childlike acceptance that, of course, we're going to fail. Of course, we're not going to be great from the beginning. And that's part of the learning process. So that's something that I'm trying to push back against and embrace the idea that every artist was at first an amateur. With that in mind, I've really been wanting to step out of my lane a little bit. I think as somebody who is creative, it's very easy to just keep doing what you are already good at and something that comes more naturally and not explore and break into new territory. And that's something that I want to do more. I want to do more exploration. I want to try new mediums. I want to do art more outside of my journal. I would love to keep a sketchbook and just play with mediums for the pure joy of the experience and creating art and it not necessarily having to be something that I'm going to sell or give to someone or hang on my wall. It doesn't always need a direct purpose for the product. And if I'm being honest, it's always been very rare for me to pursue art from that vantage point and not looking at it through the lens of how will this product serve me or serve someone else in some way. So today I'm going to get out my sketchbook and actually lean into play. I am just going to play with no ulterior motive other than to explore, learn, and create for the joy of creating. And to help me get out of my head a little bit and rediscover the medium I want to work with, which is watercolor, I'm actually going to use a learning path on Skillshare. And I've pulled it up here, so I'm going to be taking this watercolors for beginners paint with expression learning path so there's actually five different courses in this learning path that have been curated by skillshare to basically just help anybody who's interested in learning about watercolor find a bunch of classes all at once that will help them explore that topic and they have learning paths on so many other topics of interest to me but getting back into watercolor is something that I've personally been really interested in. Watercolor has always felt like the medium where I can have the most fun playing because it forces me to be more loose in my art. So I'm looking forward to taking these classes, but I'm going to start today with the Explore Color Mixing class because that I think is going to be super fun and I have here my Arteza 36 premium watercolors palette which I haven't opened in so long it's so nice to get this out again so I have all of these fun colors for us to play with I have some of my brushes here I just need to get some water and we can get to creating This is the only painting I've done in the sketchbook and it was the last year, so that goes to show you how often I've been painting. One thing I really appreciated about this class was the continued emphasis on just having fun, not overthinking, and being focused on exploring and seeing how the watercolors work on the page and just treating it all as a learning process. It really is learning for the sake of learning and creating for the sake of creating and not worrying about what the final product is going to be or if I'm going to get a poor grade because ultimately this type of class is just about discovery and learning and growing every day. It's about showing up for yourself over and over again and learning because it's something that you are passionate about and interested in. And in time, the skills and techniques that at the beginning felt totally foreign and made you feel like a total amateur 
will in time be ones that you develop and refine and eventually make you feel like a true artist. It just takes time and practice. And right now at step one, you might not know what you're doing and that is okay. So I just finished my little bit of playtime with the color mixing and had a ton of fun taking that class. And I'm really looking forward to the next class in the learning path, which is bring your watercolor to the woods, which if you know me, that is just bringing together all the things I love. I actually have a really fun video coming up that I'm so excited to share with you and is going to focus on nature journaling. And that class is definitely one that I'm going to want to take and share with you. So if you are interested in taking that class with me or any of the other classes in this learning path, I highly recommend you check out Skillshare. They are the largest online learning community for creatives and I guarantee any topic that interests you, whether that's illustration, graphic design, photography, marketing, music, you will find classes that will connect you with teachers and other members who are all committed to learning by doing. And the best part is the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can get started today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. When I have a lot on my mind, I love turning to the kitchen where I can keep my hands busy while letting my mind wander. This is my easy take on Italian sausage soup or suppa toscana and it's made super easy by adding in these pre-cut potatoes and it really just takes 20 minutes to put together and it's so delicious and comforting. I have just finished my work day at last. It was a very long one of staring at a computer for literally eight hours straight on the most gorgeous day. So I'm so excited to get up from this spot and head outside. I'm gonna take the dogs with me. I say dogs, plural, not because I got a new dog, but because I'm watching my dad's dog, Max. He is a huge St. Bernard and just the sweetest, so you'll get to enjoy seeing a little bit of him in this vlog. I just poured myself some unsweetened iced tea and I'm gonna grab a snack. And I also have my current read, which is The Little Men. I'm so close to being done. I just have a few pages left. And then I'll move on to Joe's Boys. And I just recently got the latest magazine from Daphne's Diary, which is always a joy as somebody who loves to journal. Like this is just the most gorgeous magazine ever. So I'll give you a little tour of that as well. But I'm so excited. This is the first time that I have set up the hammock. Hammock season is my favorite season. I love laying out in my hammock and reading and just being surrounded by nature. So I'm just very much looking forward to getting a dose of the sunshine and just having a nice time without my screens. The sun is shining repentance through the leaves. Its rays will wash you clean. I'm walking slowly I'm taking my time All I like of talking is starting to run Letting go of lonely Letting go of strife I just can't get enough of this beautiful life I just can't get enough of this 
beautiful life. So welcome to my hammock. There is a cardinal calling, if you're curious what bird makes that sound. That's a cardinal. I can't see it, but I think it's calling to one over here. So hopefully you can hear me over the bird sound, but I just wanted to give a little review of Little Men, which I just finished reading. So if you're not familiar with Little Men, it's actually a continuation of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. That is definitely her most popular novel and one of my all-time favorite books. So I was really excited when my husband got me this edition of Little Men and Joe's Boys, also by Louisa May Alcott. And Little Men is really picking up where Little Women leaves off. If you've read it, then you know that Joe March, one of the main characters of Little Women, at the end of that story ends up having a boys school. And this book picks up with her running this boys school and is all about the little men, the boys who go to her school, as well as a few little girls and all of their shenanigans and interactions. Similar to Little Women, a very heartwarming tale. It's definitely one that is just good for the soul and going to make you feel mostly all good feelings. There is a little bit of sadness, just like there's a little bit of sadness in Little Women. I actually think Little Men is the perfect spring read because there's a ton of spring and summer scenes. And similar to Little Women, it delves into other seasons as well. But whereas I feel like my favorite scenes from Little Women are all from the winter, my favorite scenes in Little Men were all in spring and summer. That's primarily when the book takes place. So really recommend it for this time of year, especially. Goodness, that cardinal is making a ton of noise. <laughs> I do want to share a quote from it, and you'll forgive me because it's actually the last line of the novel. So if you haven't read it, you might want to skip <laughs> this part. It doesn't give anything away, but it's just a beautiful quote and happens to be the last line. For love is a flower that grows in any soil, works its sweet miracles undaunted by autumn frost or winter snow, blooming fair and fragrant all the year, and blessing those who give and those who receive. Louisa May Alcott always has such beautiful writing and has such a beautiful message about faith in God as well. That's something you might not realize if you've only ever watched the movies because unfortunately they take the God aspect out of the movies, but Louisa May Alcott really has a ton of faith in her books as well, which is something I personally really enjoy reading about and seeing how she talks about it. So definitely check out Little Men and maybe you can join me in reading Joe's Boys because I'm definitely going to be diving into that one next. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy Little Women and if you have already read Little Men or if you're now interested in checking it out. Before I knew it, March was gone, and the first week of April passed in a blur. But the beautiful thing about journals and planners is that you can always turn the page and start again. And that's true of life, too. As L.A. Montgomery said in Anne of Green Gables, Isn't it nice to think that tomorrow is a new day with no mistakes in it yet? feels good to have the week set up in my planner and ready to go so I can spend the rest of my Sunday focused on experiencing God's peace and rest and appreciating this beautiful life he has given me. 
and I sincerely hope that something in this video helps you to recognize the beauty of your own life too. This whole world is your home So reach out your branches, lay your roots back to the soil And watch the rain help you grow I'm walking slowly, I'm taking my time All I like to talk in this Starting to ram, I'm letting go of lonely, letting go of strife. I just can't get enough of this beautiful life. I just can't get enough of this beautiful life. Oh, you look so amazing. Your hair, it drives me crazy Dreaming of God on a sandy shore Say by amazing grace Or maybe my lack of faith The seasons change But they come back the same They'll wash you clean with their rain 